okay good morning students this is our first lecture welcome to the in the 11th science as you have already learned many of the concepts of chemistry up to the 10th standard in the science subject but not separately as physics chemistry biology maths etc so first of all we will see the syllabus of subject chemistry in the 11th science as you see there are total 16 chapters first is some basic concepts of chemistry in this topic we are going to study some terminologies some units some laws etc second one is introduction to analytical chemistry so name itself tells that this topic is related to analysis so the terms which are related to analysis some applications are included in this topic third one is some analytical techniques in this topic the techniques which are related to or which are concerned with the analysis for example filtration crystallization extraction or distillation these all techniques are included in this topic the next one is structure of atom so atom related concept structure then which are the particles involved in the atom where is the location of the nucleus which are included in the nucleus etc next one is the chemical bonding next redox reaction after that modern periodic table yes you have already learned many of the things related to periodic table up to the end so we are knowing that total 118 elements are present in the periodic table then their properties applications etc next one is the elements of group 1 and 2 this means that the study of s block and their two groups next one elements of group 13 14 and 15 this is the study of p block elements next one states of matter next adsorption and colloids adsorption of colloids this topic is actually related to surface chemistry another one is chemical equilibrium then nuclear chemistry and radioactivity actually this is a new topic which is introduced in the new syllabus then basic principles of organic chemistry this is also a separate chapter in the old syllabus this is along with the analytical techniques but in the new syllabus techniques are separate and basic principles are separated another one is hydrocarbons in this chapter we are going to study alkanes alkenes alkynes their reactions etc and the last one is chemistry in everyday life okay so this is a short scenario of our syllabus now today i am going to start the second chapter that is introduction to analysis so before going to start the lecture first we will see which are the points included in this chapter first is the introductory part next scientific notation that is also called as exponential notation third one is error precision and accuracy of the measurement next is significant figures which is also called as sig figs another is percent composition and empirical formula 
नेक्स्ट इज स्टाइचोमेट्रिक कैलकुलेशंस नेक्स्ट लिमिटिंग रिएजेंट देन कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ सोल्यूशन द टर्म्स रिलेटेड टू कॉन्सेंट्रेशन दैट इज मास परसेंट मोल फ्रैक्शन मोलैरिटी मोलैलिटी एंड द लास्ट वन इज यूज ऑफ ग्राफ इन द एनालिसिस सो वन बाय वन वी विल सी ईच एंड एवरी पॉइंट first of all we have to know what is analytical chemistry so this is one of the branch of chemistry like the other branches for example we are knowing that chemistry is the subject but up to 10 we are not knowing there are some branches also like organic chemistry inorganic chemistry physical chemistry biochemistry industrial chemistry applied chemistry and analytical chemistry so analytical chemistry it is one of the branch of chemistry which deals with the study of separation identification qualitative and quantitative determination of different substances this is nothing but the analytical chemistry means the term itself says that analytical means related to analysis so in the analytical chemistry we are going to separate the sample suppose you have provided with some sample and you need to test on this then first of all you have to separate that then identify the components which are present which are absent then qualitative and quantitative determination is carried out on that sample next some introductory part of this topic first of all analytical chemistry what actually does so it investigates the chemical composition of substances in the analysis the composition of substances is very important so we have to investigate that composition firstly next for that investigation it uses some instruments and methods so spectroscopy is one of the method which is used methods for separation for identification for quantification of the matter various methods are used like distillation is there extraction is there chromatography crystallization etc next it provides the chemical or physical information about the sample chemical information means which elements are present then which states are positive means it gives some positive results and some negative results so according to that we are known the elemental composition of that sample physical information like what is the melting point what is the boiling point density etc mainly the analysis is of two types first of all qualitative analysis and second part is quantitative analysis first we will see the what is qualitative analysis so it deals with detection of only presence or absence of elements in the qualitative analysis only and only presence or absence of element is very important but in the quantitative analysis the relative proportions of elements in the compounds and mixtures that means quantity is very important so terms said that quality means only the presence or absence of elements quantity means the relative proportions now 
see some importance of analytical chemistry how analytical chemistry is important in our day to day life first is it extends the knowledge which is acquired by the students during the study of organic chemistry inorganic chemistry physical chemistry etc means the knowledge which is acquired by the students the analytical chemistry extend it by the applications second one is chemical analysis is one of the most important methods of monitoring the composition of raw materials intermediates and finished products yes chemical analysis helps to determine the composition of raw material which elements are present and in what amount then intermediates intermediate are the compounds which are form during the reaction they are very short lived species they have very short life span so during the reaction they are formed and also converted immediately and finally finished products also the composition of air in the streets and premises of industrial plants obviously air is the mixture so there are many pollutants are present in the air so for that also to determine that composition of air we are using chemical analysis next one in agriculture chemical analysis is also used to determine composition of soils and fertilizers as we know in agriculture field the soil and fertilizers these are the two important terms we have to know what type of soil is present and what type of fertilizers are used and for that we need to analyze that and for that analyzation analysis is very important okay the next importance in medicine it is used to determine the composition of medicinal preparations next is it has various applications in the forensic science engineering and industry also as in the forensic science for the criminal cases we have some samples that consist of dna rna sample so for determining the compositions we are using chemical analysis next is analytical chemistry consists of classical methods wet chemical methods and modern instrumental methods we will see one by one first of all analysis is carried out on a very small sample of the material to be tested and not on the entire bulk every time we cannot analyze the bulk quantity of the sample for example suppose we have to analyze the water sample suppose the river is there and we have to analyze the sample of that river so can we brought that river in the lab no this is not possible for us so small quantity of that water we have taken in the lab and then we analyze so analysis is carried out on a very small sample of the material and not on the entire bulk cavity bulk means in a very large quantity semi micro analysis it is also a type of analysis but why it is called as a semi micro analysis what is the difference between analysis and semi micro analysis when the amount of solid or liquid sample is a few grams only then the analysis is called as semi micro analysis okay analysis is carried out on a small sample we have already know but semi micro in this case the amount of sample is only few grams and not more than this it is of two types first qualitative analysis second is the quantitative analysis as we see earlier that in qualitative analysis only presence or absence of elements is detected 
and in quantitative analysis the relative proportions the relative quantities of elements determine next is classical qualitative analysis in includes separation methods as precipitation second is the extraction and third one is the distillation so precipitation means some amount of solid particles are present extraction suppose we have the mixture and one component is completely dissolved in that solvent then to extract that sample we are using this method distillation in this process suppose we have the mixture having two different boiling points two liquids are there having different boiling points one is low and another is high then we have to separate that and for this separation we are using distillation processes first of all as the boiling point increases the liquid which is having the low boiling point distills out first and another one is a remains in the distillation flask in this way we have to separate the compounds next is identification may be based on differences in the color or the melting point boiling point and the reactivity yes there are some tests which gives the coloration to compound so based on that color we will dis differentiate the elements depends on order also depends on melting point boiling point and the reactivity classical quantitative analysis it also includes two methods volumetric and gravimetric analysis volumetric analysis in this we have to determine the volume which is used to, to react with the quantity in the conical flask in the gravimetric analysis here also we have to determine the quantity in grams also classical quantitative analysis includes volumetric gravimetric likewise chemical methods of qualitative analysis it is carried out in the two stages first is the dry method and second one is the wet method we will see first dry method in this method the sample under the test is not dissolved this method is usually used as preliminary test the term itself says that dry method means without any solvent so the substance or the sample which is under the test is not dissolved in any solvent it is taken as it is in the dry condition for the analysis and this method is usually used as preliminary test what is preliminary test when we are doing the qualitative analysis of any sample there are some basic test for example what is the nature what is the color or appearance then solubility etc so dry method is one of the preliminary test for the sample analysis the next is wet method in this method the sample under the test is first dissolved and then analyzed to determine its composition the next is a semi micro qualitative analysis actually in this technique we are using some apparatus for example test tubes beakers evaporating dish crucible spot plate wash glass wire gauze water bath burner blow pipe pair of tongs centrifuges conical flask etc these are actually some apparatus here when we are doing the practicals i will tell you which are the apparatus and how they are used next 
the qualitative analysis of organic and inorganic compounds majority of the organic compounds are composed of relatively small number of elements such as carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen sulfur halogens etc organic compounds means the compounds which are mainly contain carbon carbon containing compounds are nothing but the organic compounds identification of organic compound it involves the test such as detection of functional group determination of melting point and the determination of boiling point functional groups there are so many functional groups which are present in the organic compounds like acid amines esters etc we will see in the next chapters what are the functional groups and in the practicals we will see how to determine the melting point and boiling point next is qualitative analysis of inorganic compounds inorganic compounds are nothing but the salts like compounds so they are having the positive and negative ions so it involves detection and the confirmation of cationic and anionic species cation means the ions having the positive charge and anion means the ions having the negative charge chemical methods of quantitative analysis same for the organic compounds quantity we will determine that is percentage constituent element and the concentration and for inorganic compounds graphimetric and titrimetric or volumetric i know there are many methods microanalysis semi microanalysis qualitative analysis quantitative analysis so we are seeing this methods practically in the lab also and that in so this is all the introductory part and we will see this in the lab also i'll explain that again by practically okay last some apparatus that we are using in the analysis are first is the test tube you have already seen in the lab test tube for taking the test next is the beaker it is also having some quantities like 50 ml beaker 250 ml beaker then 500 ml beaker etc we are using beakers for preparations next conical flask it is used for the titration next is the glass funnel glass funnel is used for filtration purpose then glass rod it is used for the stirring purpose next is measuring cylinder of course measuring cylinder is used for measuring the solutions next is pipette to pipette out or suck out the solutions then reagent bottles these bottles are used to stock the solution viscometer is also there this is used for the experiments of viscosity then the apparatus which we are using mostly in the lab is a burette with the burette stand okay this is mainly used for the titration purpose and finally summary of today's lecture firstly we have seen syllabus that is total 16 chapters are there in the 11 science chemistry then what is analysis analysis means what 
why it is needed, importance of analysis in the various fields like agriculture, medicine, day-to-day -day life, etc. Next, types of analysis. Mainly, there are two types, qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis. Qualitative means only presence or absence of elements and quantitative analysis means the relative quantities or relative proportions of elements and various methods of analysis semi micro analysis means the quantity of sample is few grams then wet method and dry method is also there in dry method the sample is taken as it is without dissolving in any solvent and in a wet method the sample which is taken for the analysis should be dissolved in the some solvent and then it would be analyzed likewise classical methods are there chemical methods are there etc and the last one is some apparatus which we are using in the lab okay students so i'll stop here the next point we will continue in the next lecture thank you